and welcome back to Sarah's Joyful Journey. I'm Sarah Joy. It's a lovely mo Monday, yes, Monday evening. I am going to start my holiday baking. I'm super excited and I have picked seven cookie recipes and a couple things of fudge. I do not need to eat these many treats, so my freezer is going to be full or we're going to find people to give them to, but I am super excited to do some baking. Since this is going to be a lot of baking, I'm going to break this up into a um, series of videos. That was my oven telling me it's ready. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to attempt is going to be some macaroons. I am taking a keto chow recipe, so on their website, I am taking the recipe for the key lime macaroons, and I am going to play around with it. So what I'm going to do for one of them, and hopefully my puppy will calm down, is I'm gonna do orange cream because orange and coconut sounds really good. And the other one I'm gonna do is chocolate and coconut. Um, I think I'm going to start with the orange first. And I will get all the ingredients together and get the puppy calmed down and I'll be right back with you. Okay, puppy's still in his crate. Hopefully he is calmed down enough. Uh, I had to give him a chew, but he is tired. And when he gets tired, he's mouthy. He just got done playing with Piper a little bit ago. And then we left to go to Publix and he didn't go to sleep that entire time. All right, so what are we gonna need for these cookies? I forgot one thing. Hold on, I'll be right back. Actually, I'll grab that. I'll just tell you what I'm gonna grab and then we'll go from there. So. We're going to need, according to the recipe, two cups of unshredded or uh, unsweetened coconut. We're gonna need some powdered swerve. It says that we're gonna need the juice of one lime and the zest. What I'm going to do is I have some orange extract. I'm gonna put a little bit, I'm gonna start with like half a teaspoon because I don't wanna like overwhelm it. And then I'm gonna make up the difference. A lime typically has two tablespoons of it, uh, juice. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons to the uh, heavy whipping cream that we need and one egg. That should work for me to get these cookies together. They're gonna bake at 350. So I am going to grab the extract and get started. <laughs> So what I've done here is in this bowl, I have the two cups of, sorry about that. I have the two, I start talking and he starts barking. We'll be back in a moment. All right, the puppies are now playing. So hopefully they're entertained. You're probably going to see Matt in the background and he's walking on them. So inside my bowl, what I uh, put in the bowl was the two cups of uh, shredded coconut, the serving of the orange cream, the third cup of powdered sweetener. And then now I'm getting ready to get another bowl. I should be prepared for this, but I'm never prepared for this. And I'm going to, in that bowl, I'm gonna put an egg. I'm going to add one teaspoon of extract. Or maybe I'll do half a teaspoon. I think I'm gonna do half a teaspoon. Yep, so half a teaspoon of extract, because I can always add more, I just can't take it away. And then I'm going to put in the third cup and two tablespoons of heavy cream. And mix those all together. Third cup. One and two. Hello, Poppy boy. Ghost, what you doing? I have nothing for you, but good sit. All right, so now it's asking us to combine those and put them together on a well-greased cookie sheet. So I have my cookie sheet right here and I'm going to take some coconut oil spray and I'm just gonna get that sprayed. All right, so that is sprayed and ready to go. And I'm gonna mix this all up. And then once this is mixed together, it's going to go in with the dry ingredients. It 
it smells delicious and yummy orange in here. All right. Find that. I'm super excited to do some baking. I love baking and I have not done any baking for quite some time. So it's fun to just come in the kitchen and play and use ingredients that I already have or mostly have. Um, I did go out and get some stuff for fudge, but that was it. Oh, and the cream, I got the heavy cream. Oh, this is coming together nicely. And I love a good coconut macaroon. So coconut is one of my favorite flavors. And this one was lime, which I'm sure would have been amazing, but I don't have the lime keto chow. And I was like, okay, so how can I play around with this? And I'm like, I could try the orange. All right, that's all mixed together. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little tiny taste of the mix and see what it tastes like. I did the right amount of orange on that. I'm glad that I didn't do the full teaspoon because I want to be able to taste both the orange and the coconut. So that came together very, very well. And then it says that we're going to put these on a cookie sheet. It says it should make 10, right? Yeah, it says it will do 10 cookies. I have a cookie scoop. I will go ahead and I will get these put on the cookie sheet and show you what they look like. And then we will put them in the oven. They're gonna bake at 350 for 15 minutes. All right, well, I did manage to get 10 cookies out of it. One is kind of small. And again, these are gonna go in the oven for 15 minutes. So I'll put them in the oven and then I'm gonna clean up and we'll come and we'll make the chocolate version. All right, so the orange macaroons are in the oven. They have about 10 minutes left and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the chocolate ones together. For the chocolate, I'm not gonna use any flavor extract. I don't think we're gonna need it, but I again will taste it. And if I need to, I can add a little bit of vanilla, but I don't think we're gonna need that. So we're gonna start with the two cups of shredded coconut into our bowl. This was really cool. This used up almost all my shredded coconut, which was perfect because it is just needed to get used anyway. All right, so there is that. Then I'm going to put in the third cup of powdered swerve. So that is ready to go. And then we're gonna add in our chocolate keto chow. I'm hoping this will taste kind of like a mountains because I really enjoyed mounds before. I've got to grab a couple things. I cleaned them, but I forgot to bring them over. All right, so I'm gonna get a fork again and we're gonna go ahead and just mix these ingredients together in the bowl. They're nice and well incorporated. Make sure there's like no lumps in the keto chow or anything like that. Smells really good already. Hello, ghost. Good sit. That's a good boy. You want a treat? I'm gonna give him a treat real quick. Good puppy. Good boy. All right, so we got our dry ingredients together. Now we're gonna take our egg Our third cup of heavy cream, plus two tablespoons. And then once I have these cookies together, I'm going to clean up and then we'll do a little bit of fudge as well. All right, I'm gonna pour that in there. Mix that all together. I 
And now our wet mixture is gonna go in with our dry mixture. Just keep mixing well. If it looks too dry, you can always add a tiny bit more cream, which I might have to do since I did not use any extract. But you don't want it to be super dry or super wet for these cookies. I am going to add like maybe a teaspoon more of cream. You'll probably hear Ghost Toy. He's literally right at my feet because we've been working on our bonding and our engagement and he is now very attached to me and likes to be where I'm at. Okay, that looks really good. Came together nicely. Let's give it a little tiny bit of a taste. It's nice and chocolatey. I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the vanilla extract because I think it would add a nice flavor profile. And I think this time I might use again, just the half. Let me grab that. All right. So I'm gonna use half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. The other cookie recipes that I am planning on are all going to be um, following an exact recipe. So these, I will link down below the recipe I use. And then of course I've mentioned all my changes and what I've done to make them different. All right, go ahead and give this another little taste test. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. So I'm gonna get these cookies measured out onto the cookie tray. Again, it says it's gonna make 10. So I'll get those ready and we have about five minutes left until the orange cream are done. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, so the orange cream cookies just came out of the oven. They are sitting safely away from this guy. He is getting ready to have his dinner and he's going to give me love bites. Yeah. So this is Ghost, he is eight weeks old right now. He's an Australian Shepherd, yes, love you buddy. And he knows his food is over there and that daddy's got him. He's a big love bug, loves me. He's doing really well with his training. Yesterday he really started to understand and submit, um, cement, down, sit. He, he does pretty good with cum, which we don't say the word cum yet, um, but I can recall him pretty good. So we're working on that. And now he knows his food is over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set him down so he can go eat his dinner. And I am gonna pull out a plate and get my little spatula. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the cookies off the tray. They came out looking really, really good. And then in a moment, I can have Matt step over too, and we can try one of these cookies. But I'm really happy with how they came out. And I have the chocolate ones are already in the oven. And then we'll get started on fudge in just a moment. So there you have it. There's the 10 orange cream. They're still super hot. But Matt, do you want to come over and taste test? Sure. Ghost is chur chewing on his toy. So this is the orange cream. Mm, smells good. Mm. It smells really good, very tropical. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Make those. <laughs> I did. <laughs> not, not you, them. All of you. 
make this. Oh my gosh, those are really good. Wow. It's not overly orange and it's not overly coconut. But it's, it's not a good overly mix. sweet either. No, it's not. This is a really good cookie. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah. I like those. Well, hide I'm going to let those cool. Hide those because I'm going to eat all of them tonight. <laughs> Probably will too. All right. Well, that is an experiment gone really well. I'm gonna get a photo of these and I'll come back and I will start going over with how we're gonna make our fudge. So I'll check back momentarily. All right, so we are done with the chocolate ones. They came out looking amazing. So Matt, you wanna come over and try one of these with me? Sure. Eat half a cookie. They're still pretty hot. Chris, my arm to try. This is hopefully will taste like an almond or a mounds. Mm. I like it. The coconut really comes through. That's your forward note. The chocolate is there. Would you say it tastes kind of like mounds? Mm hmm. It's pretty similar to a mound. So if you like the mounds where that's not overly chocolatey, um, the chocolate here mm. is an accent, but it's a good one. It's good. I like that. Mm. I like the orange better, but I do love the chocolate. But I like chocolate. I like orange better. I don't know. They're, they're both so good. Yeah. They're both amazing. All right. Well, that was a good cookie experiment. Yes. I am going to reset up and get ready for fudge. We're gonna do gingerbread fudge. And then my daughter bought me some peppermint because I have not had the budget for it this month. So she brought me some peppermint and I or and ordered me some peppermint chips. So we're gonna make peppermint fudge as well. So I'm super excited about that. I know others have made the peppermint fudge and they've used the ice chips. Um, I was going to have her get me some of those, but they're xylitol and I, xylitol is toxic to dogs. And even though we're careful, I still didn't want to take a chance. All right. So let me get cookies put away and get everything set up and we'll be back for fudge in just a moment. All right. I had enough chocolate chips to do three batches and enough molds to do three batches of fudge. So we're gonna do the gingerbread, the peppermint, and then we're also gonna do pecan sticky bun because uh, I heard that one was really good. I wish I had some pecans to stir into it, but I don't. So unfortunately, I'm not going to, but we're gonna do what we got. All right, so the first thing that I've got to do with this is I'm going to pour half a cup of heavy cream into a very big, measuring cup and then I don't think I need the whole thing of the white chocolate chips I only think I only need part it says I need eight ounces and this is a nine ounce bag all right so I'm gonna get grab my scale and I'll be back with you in just a moment all right I have my measuring cup now on my scale and teared and ready to go and I'm gonna open this bag of chocolate chips and get the eight ounces that is required into the mixing bowl. I always over pour never fails. I'm just gonna open that up and take a few off the top and get that back to actual eight ounces. Perfect. These will get put in a little container and then I'll use them as a mix in for a creamy they would be delicious. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna start melting this in 30 second increments in the microwave and we'll be back with that in just a moment. 
All right, it took about a minute to get the chocolate and the cream all melted together, so that is ready to go. I'm gonna start uh, by next adding in one ounce of butter, which I pre-measured. We're also gonna put in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, because the good thing is vanilla will go with all of these flavors. And then I'm going to start with gingerbread for this first round. And then we're gonna put in our gingerbread keto chow. I haven't even made any gingerbread keto chow. I might have to make up some gingerbread creamies. Cause that would also be equally delicious cause I have not done any gingerbread yet this year. and I'll need to use it because my expiration date is for August of next year. So. All right, so I'm just mixing those together so they're nice and well incorporated and hopefully it's still warm enough to melt down that butter in there. It says that you can use sprinkles. Um, I'm basing this recipe off the banana white chocolate fudge. Um, so it's all the ingredients there, except I'm subbing out the gingerbread. Oh my God, it smells so good. So I'm going to try and just mix it all in together and get that butter melted in there. Of course, my spatula for stirring is a little smooth too, a little small also, but it does smell really, really good. And then it's gonna go into a mold. And it does say that it needs to sit for hours. So I may not actually get to do a taste test of the actual fudge for this video, uh, cause I wanna go ahead and get this out of the room. But I will give it a couple hours and if it's pretty set in a couple hours, I'll probably go ahead and cut it and taste it. Somebody is probably walking in front of my window. So Piper's alerting. All right, I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish stirring this and get it into the mold. I have these silicone molds and I don't necessarily spray them. I find that nothing really sticks in there. All right, when we're ready to start the next batch, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so I did lick the bowl. I've got the gingerbread in there. It's pretty tasty. It's fairly mild, which is good because I don't like gingerbread in theory. Keto Chow has been the only gingerbread that I've liked. And then Disney does these soft gingerbread cookies that I absolutely love. But normally gingerbread is not my thing uh, because I don't like molasses. And usually that comes through heavily. In this one, it's definitely more of like the ginger and cinnamon and all the spices that I do enjoy. So I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna get that in the fridge and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do pecan sticky bun and then I'll fill it up with peppermint. All right, got that gingerbread fudge in the uh, refrigerator to chill out and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour my half cup of heavy cream into the bowl and I'm going to turn on my scale and get my eight ounces of chocolate chips ready to go. All right, so those are ready to go ahead and go into the microwave. Um, this time I'm gonna put it in for 45 seconds and then I'll follow it up with 15 seconds if it needs it. All right, I just got done microwaving that. It looks like it's gonna come together really nicely. What I am gonna do since this is still hot is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in my butter and then I'll do my extract and the keto chow. But I want my butter to start melting down some because it was really tough last time to get the butter all the way incorporated. That's going really well together. All right. Looking good. 
I'm excited to try this one. Like I said, I wish I had some actual like toasted pecans that I could put in, but since it was a last minute decision, I figured it's still gonna be pretty tasty um, and I can always improve upon it next time. So that butter is almost melted in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in our half teaspoon of vanilla and a scoop of our pecan sticky bun. I just looked to see if I had some peppermint extract and I don't. I have some peppermint oil, which I might use, but I don't know, because I haven't actually tried the peppermint keto chow yet. So <laughs> I, um, I'm just kind of winging it with the fudge, but I will be good with vanilla and the peppermint chips. All right, there goes our pecan sticky bun in there. And we're gonna get this all mixed together and poured into my gray loaf pan. And then once that's done, we'll come back and we'll do the peppermint and then I will go ahead and we'll wrap up this video. I think I'll do my taste test tomorrow and we'll do it at the beginning of the next part in this series. I believe that we're gonna do a three-part baking series. So this is going to be part one and then you can expect part two sometime, hopefully tomorrow. But let me get this pecan sticky bun come back done and then we'll come back and do the peppermint fudge. All right, I am ready to get started on the peppermint fudge. Again, it's gonna be half cup of heavy cream and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this, now that I've used half a thing of heavy cream away. And then we're going to add in our eight ounces of peppermint chips. So let me get this paired and ready so that I can weigh that. I've never tried these uh, peppermint flavored ones, so I'm gonna go ahead and try one of them real quick. I am super excited to see what they are going to taste like. They're actually very good. A nice peppermint flavor. I just dumped all nine ounces into the bottom of the bowl. That's all right, I can fix my mistake. Okay. So now I'm going to get that melting in the microwave. Um, now that this is my third batch, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in for a minute, 15 seconds, because I know that's what it's going to take. All right. Once it is melted, we'll come back and we'll stir in our butter and our peppermint keto chow. All right. I just finished melting the peppermint and with the cream. And as I'm stirring it, and I'm getting ready to add the butter. I can just smell some of the peppermint. It smells lovely. Peppermint, I think, is one of my favorite holiday flavors. I've always loved it. Peppermint bark was a go-to. I wonder... That would be something would be fun, not for this year, but maybe next year I'll get brave and I'll experiment with doing um, a peppermint bark. It shouldn't be too hard. But the problem is a lot of times like sugar-free candies, I don't like all the ingredients, so I can't get them necessarily the way that I would desire to eat them. I don't even 100% like lilies, but I don't mind it for small treats occasionally. All right, so this is actually gonna need a little bit more time in the microwave because it is not melting very well at all. So I'm gonna pop it in for another 15 seconds and we'll see how we go. Okay, I think we're in business. I did have to do it for another 40 seconds or so. The peppermint ones really just for whatever reason don't want to melt as cleanly. They're even still now, they're still pretty chunky. So they might have to go in a little bit longer. That's kind of depressing, but that's all right. It is what it is. I mean, that's just the nature of cooking stuff. Every ingredient is different. And because it's not just the pure white chocolate that we were using in the other batches, it's the peppermint flavored ones. Yeah, just, just enough different to change it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it about 20 more seconds because it's still pretty chunky. I don't know if you can see, but it is 
there's like big chunks still in there. All right, we definitely do not want big chunks in our fudge. So I'm gonna get this microwave and we'll be back in a moment. All right, it's still kind of chunky, but I don't want it to get any hotter. So we're just gonna have slightly chunky fudge, I guess. Because it's been now microwaved for over two minutes and the other ones definitely did not take that long. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to stir in the peppermint keto chow and our half teaspoon of vanilla, which this vanilla is like really oddly dark. Oh, it's just Publix brand. It is a pure vanilla, so. Interesting. So you should always read labels because usually when I read vanilla, it's vanilla bean and alcohol. Sometimes there's water. This says vanilla bean extracts in water um, and alcohol. So they made it a little bit different, which could explain why the color is a bit different. Not that it's a bad thing. <laughs> it's not. It's just difference. And sometimes you just notice that. All right, this is my first time opening the peppermint keto chow. Oh, you've got to come smell this. This is, mm, it's not like over the top peppermint smelling. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I want that as like a creamy. Yeah, I, I can make some peppermint, peppermint keto chow creamies. Peppermint creamies. ice cream. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll probably yeah. I'll probably do that this weekend so we can have it for Christmas dinner. <laughs> That's it. That's what we're having for Christmas dinner then. We're going to have peppermint creamies. That's how we're rolling in this house this year. <laughs> One week away. Yep, next next week. I might do a brisket. Um we're on a super tight budget since I'm not working this month and into January so um, because of the ghost so we have to pretty much use what is in my freezer which is fine but I do have a half a brisket in there so we might use that as our Christmas dinner I have not decided yet because um, Matt does have to work on Christmas because that's just the way it works when you work at Disney you say you have full-time availability and your days off or your days off and you have to work the holidays too all right, so this came together pretty good. I'm going to get it poured into my blue mold, and I will be back to close out this video in just a moment. All right, there you have it. That is part one of our baking. We did the two cookies and three fudges. Uh, tomorrow's video, I think, don't hold me to it, but I think I'm going to do snickerdoodles, toffee chip, and apple pie snickerdoodle. So I'll do three batches of cookies tomorrow and then we'll come back after that for part three for the rest of the cookies and we'll see who knows, maybe I'm just gonna get a wild hair and uh, decide to make even more keto desserts that I don't need to eat that I'll have to now find homes for, but that's all right. We'll worry about finding homes for it later. I'm just enjoying the baking process of it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and the links will be left down below for you to make these recipes yourself if you wish. Bye for now.